It is a metropolis rising from the Atlantic Ocean. The Echo Atlantic City project is the ambitious plan to build a vibrant 21st century city that will stretch over 7 kilometers and will be built on over 9 square kilometers of land reclaimed from the ocean. This huge reclamation project kicked off in 2008 when the developer South Energix began reclaiming land from the ocean that had gradually disappeared over the years as a result of coastal erosion. In West African terms, this is undoubtedly the largest project of its nature ever executed. We're replacing what uh, the sea has taken away over the past hundred years or so. We're restoring the shoreline to where it was way back in 1905. It is one of the key strategies the state government is employing to combat the effects of climate change by strengthening its coastal defense. I am part of an administration that ran for eight years that planned this project. So I was persuaded not only by its merits but also its benefits and, and seamlessly I have taken it on as my own baby to deliver it. The Co Atlantic City is so many things in one. Yes, it's a huge civil works project, but it also enables government to respond to the challenges of nature, erosion in the southwest and south-south coastal shoreline of Nigeria. But this project is also a major part of Lagos State Governor Fashola's dream to transform Lagos into a model mega city by 2015. Of course, with the help of its private sector. And being adjacent to Victoria Island, it will ease a burden of overpopulation and congestion in this commercial center of Lagos. What we're simply trying to do here is that first we become a mega city by status because of our population. And we set ourselves the objective to become the model mega city for Africa, a city where people can live, work and play. It also provides the opportunity to forge the critical synergy between the public sector and private sector. The whole project from the restoration, the reclamation, up to the reconstruction will create jobs, create opportunities for so many other sectors of the economy. Therefore, government has used its policies on environment to fuel the private sector, which certainly is the engine of growth. So it's, it's a very strategic partnership. The project will take up to seven years, and when its seven districts are complete, it will house up to 250,000 residents with 150,000 commuters expected daily. Excluding the financial district, at least 1,500 plots will be for sale, and each investor is expected to develop their own plots, but only in accordance with Echo Atlantic's regulations. The plan is to have its own independent services like power supply, clean water and its own sewage distribution. I believe to the, the average Nigerian to have uninterrupted power supply guaranteed and to have water on tap that is of drinkable quality without having to have a, an independent generator to back up the national grid supply. That is absolutely important. Obviously we have a unique opportunity here. We are building from scratch. We have a blank canvas. So it's, by any standards, a huge project. In five years from now, the financial center, which is located in the northwest corner of the project, will be quite well advanced. We envisage placing the foundations, the pile foundations for the first high tower structure before the end of this year, or certainly very early of next year. As developers continue to pump sand into the sea, land has already begun to reappear and they're building a seawall that has already been dubbed the Great Wall of Lagos. Though there may be skepticism about the quality of the work, will be investors have been assured that high standards of architecture, urban planning and infrastructure are being employed. One of the world's leading environmental and research centers in Denmark undertook extensive tests of Echo Atlantic Sea Defense System and world-renowned consultants, architects and engineers from Holland are working on this project. With the help of Chinese vessels, up to 82,000 tons of sand is being pumped into the reclamation area every day. The city promises to raise the standards of infrastructure in Lagos with an eight-lane coastal highway, 150 kilometers of roads through the district 
a tramway system to circulate through the city, and public transport services and pedestrian walkways, and a ferry transfer terminal. We want a free-running light rail system which will not be interrupted by traffic jams. One of the light rail lines will run along the entire Atlantic zone overlooking the promenade and the sea. We want efficient road networks. We will enforce parking within compounds. Talking to Lagos State Government's Commissioner of Waterfront Infrastructure Development, Prince Oniru, he assures that the state is determined to realize this dream project as it will go a long way in developing Lagos' commercial, financial and tourist sectors. What is the primary aim of the government going into this project? This all started by the erosion problem that we've had in the past since the early, uh, early 50s up until the late 90s and to the millennium, whereby um, Victoria Island, Bar Beach in particular, has eroded away. So the state just couldn't sit back and not do anything about it. Hence, the first phase of this project, which was the permanent solution to the erosion problem of Lagos Bar Beach. Now, Eco Atlantic City is just the next level. And what do I mean by that? We're not doing anything extraordinary. All we're doing is reclaiming back lost land to that ocean and then to protect the entire city. So the government interest in it is to see that it's done properly and the developer adhere to all the set rules and regulations as, as it were in the contract signed by both parties. How much is this project going to cost the state government? The project Eco Atlantic City is costing Lagos State zero naira. The only thing it's costing the state is the manpower, and what do I mean by that? The likes of us supervising the work. The funding is completely private and it's a private developer's um, project. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not costing the taxpayer or the state anything. Have you already began selling the spaces and what has the interest been like? A lot of people have started showing interest, especially, and, and, and this, is, this, is, um, this is really funny because the area most people are going to now where the construction is going to start is the financial district for some reason. I mean, the economy of the world right now is not the best. But funny enough, that is where people are showing more interest. You have local investors and you have um, international investors because this is going to be a haven for uh, tourists. So maybe that's why people are now looking at the financial area to position themselves to um, what's, what's to come. Is this city going to replace Victoria Island as a place to be? It's not. Lagos per se anymore. This is a world-class city that we're putting together and I'm sure this is not going to be the end of it because after this success story somewhere along that coastline another project will come along that will want to better this. We have a coastline that spans between Badagri and a place called Lekwe both on the east and west and we have 186 or thereabout kilometers of coastline, you know, and this is just 6.5 kilometer of that coastline that we're developing here, you know. So you can imagine the other 180 kilometers of coastline, what we can do. I think the sky's the limit. I think we're blessed in Lagos and we just need to put enough effort into keeping this endowed state what it should